Ladies and gents, I bring you the ultimate wireless gaming PC featuring ASUS BTF. What does BTF stand for exactly, you might ask? Take a guess. The correct answer is E, Back to Future. Oh, back to the future. It is the new revolution in PC gaming, where connectors are all hidden, providing users with more aesthetically looking PCs. Asus was kind enough to send in all these parts and sponsor this video so that I can build the ultimate wireless water-cooled gaming PC. They're also kind enough to give away some amazing prizes like ROG peripherals, PC components, and your very own BTF motherboard and RTX 4090 graphics card. It's completely free to enter. Just visit the Gleam link down below if you guys want to participate. The operating system we're going with is Windows 11 Pro, which I was able to get for dirt cheap at VIP or CDKey.com. They do sell Windows 10 Pro keys as well, and if you do plan on picking one up yourself, make sure to use the code TS20 to get a discount. After checking out, they will send you instructions on how to retrieve the key, and all you have to do is copy and paste the new key into the activation settings of Windows, and you're good to go. The CPU we're going with is the Intel i9-14900K because this is going to pair beautifully with our ROG Maximus Z790 Hero BTF motherboard. This beast has 24 cores and 32 threads, making this not only one of the best gaming chips out there, but also for heavy workloads as well. I'm also going to be installing a contact frame with the CPU. This thing does wonders in keeping the temps down on the processor. Basically, any build I do moving forward, whether it's on the AM5 platform or LGA 1700 socket, I'm always going to install a contact frame. It makes a huge difference. So we're going to be popping the CPU inside the brand new ROG Maximus Z790 Hero BTF, which is going to be the centerpiece of this build. This is also the very first ROG advanced BTF motherboard in the market. And there's a difference. You got BTF and then you have advanced BTF. The BTF motherboard provides you with hidden connectors in the back of the motherboard for clean cable management. However, for the graphics card, you would plug it in normally and the cables would be visible from the front. Whereas advanced BTF, the GPU is included as well through a PCIe high power connector directly on the board. This delivers up to 600 watts through the motherboard and out the back, achieving this clean wireless look from the front. This is also a really good looking board, perfect for the old black stealthy builds, but if you do fancy a bit of RGB, you can also change the colors on the VRM covers over here on the right side. Whoa, this has three USB-C ports? I've never seen three USB-C ports in the back of a motherboard. This is the first for me. That's crazy. Got a buttload of connectivity, BIOS flash, clear CMOS button up top, and Wi-Fi 7 connectivity. Damn. Oh, you know, since the connectors are on the back of it, you can't put it on top of your table or your motherboard box anymore. So you have to be extremely careful not to damage the pins, especially from the RGB headers. So I think we're gonna start using these included foams to make sure that the motherboard is protected. So we put this on here first, and then the motherboard. Yep, that's gonna be the new meta. All right, nice and tight, just how I like it. Hey, yo. So cooling the CPU is actually going to be a water block. We're going to be throwing on the ROG Ryujin 3 water block. And I actually, this caught my attention when I was at CES earlier this year. This is the first time I actually saw that product live in action. And it got me thinking, imagine this, full custom water cool build using the ROG BTF ecosystem. No cables in sight, just the tubes and the PC components. Mark my words, guys, I feel like that's gonna be the future of PC building in the next three to five years, probably even sooner, probably the next one to two years, if I'm being honest. We're gonna start seeing BTF water blocks for graphics cards. That would be freaking epic. But yeah, the water block is super minimalistic. It's got a 3.5 inch IPS LCD display, just like the Ryujin 3, but without the tubes and the radiator, of course. The water block also comes with 16 millimeter fittings, which I think are gonna be a little too big for this build. So we'll be going with 14 millimeter fittings from Corsair instead, which I think is a sweet spot between 12 and 16 millimeters. Also, what's cool about this water block is that it comes with an embedded fan inside, and this is to provide additional cooling to the surrounding VRMs. 
And according to ASUS, it's helped lower the temps by 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty wild. You know, I'm probably gonna install the water block at the end just because the inlet and outlet ports are on the top. And if I do put this in right now, it's gonna be very difficult to install the fitting. So I'll hold off towards the end. And also realized there's cables coming out of it. So that kind of goes against the whole BTF ecosystem, but it is towards the top. So I think we can go ahead and hide them pretty easily. I'm not too concerned about the cables. Okay, let's install our memory now. So we're going with the Corsair Dominator Titaniums in black. Uh, we're throwing in a total of 64 gigs, running at 6600 megahertz. And I feel like the new Dominator Titaniums from Corsair are going to really complement the case. That's one of the main reasons why I went with these sticks as opposed to something else. They're going to complement the case and the motherboard. And then for storage, we're keeping it simple, just a two terabyte M.2 drive from Corsair. This is the MP700 Pro running on PCI Gen 5 speeds. We got ridiculous 12,400 megabytes per second read and up to 11,800 write. That is blazing, blazing fast. I'm no longer using this precision bit screwdriver set because it's outdated. This is actually the new and refreshed 2024 version which if you guys want to check out, I'll drop a link to down below. So the case I'm building in is the ROG Hyperion BTF edition. Essentially, it's the same exact case, but with additional cutouts on the motherboard tray, as you guys can see here, which is needed so that we can pass through the connectors from the motherboard and plug in the cables from the back. I don't know if you guys remember, but I actually built uh, Frost V4 in the original case of the Hyperion, but in white. And I, the case kind of grew on me, so, I'm kind of excited that I'm building in it again. So I think the next logical step would be to figure out the fan and radiator configuration. We are only cooling the CPU, so a single 360 rad is more than enough, but I did pick up the thicker radiator instead of the slim one from Corsair. This is the XR7 instead of the XR5, so this is definitely gonna be more than plenty. I just have to figure out where I'm gonna be mounting the radiator, either in the front or on the top. This case makes it easy to do a custom water cool build. We can remove this panel over here and have access to another 360 millimeter bracket. So we'll be hooking up the pump over here in the back, which means we won't have enough space or clearance to install our radiator and fans in the front, which means our only option is to put the rad on the top with the fans and do a push configuration. I don't know how many of these fans I'm gonna end up using. I know I'm gonna use at least six of them. So we'll have three intake in the front and then three exhaust on the top. But if we remove the panel over there on the side, we have room to add three more fans for intake as well. So I think we might end up with six intake and only three exhaust. That's a lot of positive pressure. So um, we might add one more exhaust fan in the back to kind of even it out a little bit. Of course ASUS had to zip tie all the cables. That is fantastic. boy you know what let's open up the pump next so we can put it inside the case that way we can get an idea of how much room we have to work with what oh my god I had no idea oh, I had no idea this is huge this is that enormous wow this is way more thicker than the than the previous Corsair pump Okay, this might be an issue. Okay, let's say 
we're hooking this up over here. You know what? Let's put the fans first. Let's say I'm going with triple fans as intake. We got the bracket over here, and then the pump sits right here. That is, that's doable, right? Like the gravis car is not gonna reach the pump, is it? Well, only one way to find out. Let's go to unbox this bad boy. Think the sexiest graphics card on the market could get any sexier you guys look at that no connectors in sight they blocked it out in the front you can see actually where it's supposed to go and then they added this in the back which i think they're calling it gch power goldfinger i can't make this up they're calling it goldfinger which kind of makes sense actually anyways yeah this portion plugs into the motherboard so let's go and pop this in and see what it's going to look like we don't have to technically install it. I could just hold it up over here just so we can. Oh no, that's really close. Shit. No freaking way. You know what? Let's just go and install it. No, it's off by a good inch. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. sucks. What if we try the front? Let's try this side, why not? You know what, the problem with this is the, is the power supply shroud. I can't go that deep. That's what she said. Yeah, look how much this freaking blocks, dude. Oh, this is so annoying. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me try this now. Can technically go up just a little bit, right? Oh, yes. Yes, this will work, actually. You can even have it sitting right on top of the power supply shroud if we really need to. The only issue are the ports. They can't be right in front of the graphics card. So we're gonna have to push it all the way down, which essentially is like almost touching the bottom of the graphics card. This is our only option, unless we bring it up all the way to the top, and that does not look good at all. Oh, maybe it does. <laughs> Hold on, then the tubes would be over here, making it a lot easier to run straight to the CPU. Okay, I'm gonna brainstorm a little bit, see what's the best possible route to take, and I will be right back. One eternity later. All right, guys, I figured out the best possible location for the pump, hands down. So I'm gonna be mounting it right here on this bracket, on the, uh, the middle fan in the front, and the outlet is gonna sit just above the top of the GPU. So here's the run that I have planned. Out from the CP block into the top rad, out from the top rad, back into the pump, out from the pump and back into the CP block. Perfect. This is a really good spot to end for today, you guys. Got a lot of work done. I'll be back tomorrow to install the power supply, hook up the fittings, and do the tube runs. There's definitely a lot of black. I feel like we could add a splash of color from the RGB lights and maybe go with some colored coolant just to add a bit of um, accent colors in there. But yeah, overall, loving the way this is turning out. I will see you guys very soon. All right, ladies and gents, welcome to day two of working on don't have a name for this PC actually. Let's name it real quick. BlackRock version two. My OG's watching this video. I've probably seen the original BlackRock many, many moons ago. I think that name is fitting for this case and for the color scheme. Speaking of which, we are going with black satin tubes for the hardline build. I think these are gonna look absolutely sick inside the case. So let's go ahead and pop in the power supply first and then work on our tube runs.
So there you have it, BlackRock finally completed. What an absolute unit this PC is. Not just in size, but in performance as well. I can pretty much max out any game I want in any resolution and not break a sweat. The Waterblock seems to be doing its job quite well, taming the 14900K and keeping the temps down under 75 degrees Celsius while playing the finals in 1440p epic settings. Aesthetically, it looks good, but it could look better, if I'm being honest. I always prefer a full custom loop as opposed to a hybrid loop where we're only cooling the CPU. But we don't have any water blocks available for BTF GPUs as of yet. So there's not much I can do at the moment, unfortunately, but I would love to eventually do a full custom BTF loop when we do start getting BTF blocks in. I will say though, the absence of cables from the front definitely contribute to an overall clean and minimalistic aesthetic and I absolutely love it, but it's not for everyone. I feel like without cables, the PC is lacking character. There's nothing in there that really separates it from everyone else's PC. I feel like the cables are what give your PC a personality and make it stand out. So that's why I don't think BTF is going to be for everyone. But if you prefer that clean and wireless look, then BTF is definitely for you. Personally, I dig the look, and this is definitely the route I wanna take for my personal system when we do eventually get BTF water blocks and wider range of BTF products. We don't have that much of a selection just yet. I mean, after all, this is brand new, but ASUS is making it a mission to expand this ecosystem with its partners. The main components for BTF right now are the motherboard and the case, which are both required. But if you wanna take it a step further, you can go advanced BTF with the motherboard and include the GPU as well, which is what we did today. I do have one little nitpick with the case, however. I wish the side panel wasn't tinted so damn dark. It completely drowns out the components inside and makes it hard to see the lighting, despite having the brightness set to max. Other than that, I'm very happy with the tubing. The bends are nearly perfect and the rest of the tube runs are straighter than me. I did make the choice of putting the tubes on top of the GPU for convenience in case I need to swap out the card for any reason and not have to drain the entire system in the process. Also, I do think it does look much better this way because the tube runs are shorter and cleaner. The only downside to that, however, is that if it starts to leak anywhere, the first thing that's gonna suffer is the graphics card, and that's gonna be a very traumatic event. Guys, don't forget to enter the ROG giveaway where you too can win PC parts to build your very own BTF system like you see in this video, including the Z790 Dark Hero and the RTX Strix 4090 bundle. But there's a ton more awesome prizes they're giving out and it's completely free to enter. So make sure to click the link below to sign up. I'll drop a link to everything I use down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for the next one.